So, uh, good evening and welcome along to uh, Fermentation and Whiskey uh, from Irish Whiskey Review. M Marty, is this all about wood and, and metal or is there more to it than that? Well, there's much more than that, Justin. Much, much more. It's actually quite scientific. I've had to do some research for this this week. So, uh, I've been a busy boy. H have you? All right. Studying, studying away then. So, we've both got glasses this week, haven't we? Yes. Uh, well... I've, I've, I haven't poured myself anything yet. <laughs> oh, no, well, well, I I have still some of that tasting stuff left, but there you go. Uh, uh, but it's it's actually lovely. Uh, I tried a wee drop it with uh, uh, the Mountain Dew. It actually goes very well with the Mountain Dew. Well, well, <laughs> I know, I know, I shouldn't do it. I know, I shouldn't do it. I know, it's, I know, I know. You're going to tell me off now. Uh, we cooked the umbrella, some cherries. Possibly a wee sparkler or something like that with it, Justin, maybe. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would love to do that. I would love to do that. It's so what's been happening this week in whiskey then? Well, Justin, I'm going to read the news this week in whiskey. And... Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> right. I normally wear glasses, so if I go a bit wonky in this, start feeling a bit dizzy, you'll know why. <laughs> now, this week in whiskey... So the launch of two new Irish brands, or two new Irish expressions. These are from the big names, the big hitters. We had Mac uh, Middleton, very rare, 2020 released this week. Now, every year, Middleton releases their MVR. Uh, they are extremely collectible. They're limited to, I don't know these days, this is a huge number, in relation to other uh, bottlings, but they're limited to about 30,000 bottles, roughly. Retails for about £180 this year, so the price of it started to creep up a little bit. But this is the last one that was made by the head distiller, Brian Nation. He's ventured off to pastures new over in the US, so this is his parting gift, and he read out a little bit, he had uh, read out uh, a statement he had prepared. So. This is quite exciting. I tasted it. It's very nice. It's very different from, from previous MVRs, which every year they sort of change the, the, the recipe. The head distiller gets to make this up. And he spends quite a lot of time doing it. The next one coming out, that'll be the first by uh, the new distiller. So that was quite exciting. Uh, the next one was, and you were in on this too, uh, Bush Mills have released cask strength whiskies from the new Causeway collection. So this is a new thing. Uh, people have been kind of crying out for this for quite a long time. They brought out a 12-year-old Muscatel cask, uh, which is bottled at 53.5%, retails about £100, and a 25-year-old Malaga cask at 56.4%. Very potent, extremely good. Uh, I was really, really impressed by it. It's layers of flavour. Uh, it'll retail for about £400. Now, those are exclusive to the island of Ireland. Uh, I must Portugal. admit, I must admit, Marty, they, they were, uh, the, the 1995 one, I thought, was something particularly special. It, it's so much it's so much flavour that you, you, you just have to let it work away. And you're always getting new things and working with it. The longer it sits, if you add a little bit more water to it. It's got lots of flavour. Um, I'm really, really good. Really impressed by uh, the Muscatel cast. Not just so much, but uh, that's, that's just my opinion on that. Okay. Okay. Now, we're moving over to McCallan. McCallan. Now, McCallan have announced that they are going to release the Red series, which includes the oldest whiskies that they've ever released. Now, there's going to be six bottles in this collection. Uh, oh, this looks good. This looks really good. That looks really good. Just hold your horses, Justin. Hold your horses, my friend. Uh, the Red Collection, it relates to the name of the founder of Macallan, Alexander Reed, because Reed means red. Now, there are six bottles. Uh, a 40-year-old, a 50-year-old, a 60-year-old, a 71-year-old, a 74-year-old, and a 78-year-old bottling. Just my glasses. Uh, now, do you know the prices of these, Justin? Okay, en enlighten me. Right. The 40-year-old 
is retailing for £11,300. Right? The 50-year-old jumps up a little bit, and it's going to be £37,500. The 60-year-old, oh. £49,000. £49, sorry, £49,000. The 71-year-old, £58,500. The 74-year-old, £61,500. And the 78-year-old is a bargain at 65500 quid. Now... That's a lot of money. <laughs> it's a lot of money. If you want to have all six of these, and I'm going to hazard a guess and say, uh, if, you can, if you can afford these, you're not really going to drink them. I reckon none of these will ever be drunk. If you want the whole collection, that'll set you back £283,300. Not even you have that kind of money, Justin. <laughs> yeah. Right. Now, on a lighter note, we go to Bullock Bourbon. Now, Bullock and Frontier Whiskey are owned by Diageo, and this week they announced that they are going to plant a million oak trees in the next five years. It's all part of uh, 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 an environmental drive that the company's grown up with. They want to become carbon neutral. They want to help the environment, etc., etc. So they have teamed up with the uh, North American Forestry Union, I think it's called, and they want to plant these million oak trees. So it'll be white oak, obviously. Uh, casks making casks for whiskey. You use an awful lot of wood, so this is their way of, of putting it back. And now that has soaked up six hundred and forty-five thousand tons of CO two. Uh, the bullet's owned by Diageo, and Sophie Kelly of Diageo North America said, "A bullet. We believe now more than ever that business have a responsibility to our environment, our communities, and our planet." So uh, I think that's to be uh, congratulated. Um, I think more companies could do this kind of thing. If if we are to help uh, the environmental problems, big companies certainly should be able should be able to have the resources to do this uh, uh, and help fight global warming and climate change. So that's the news from Bullet Bourbon. Now, staying in the US, it's come up too late this week that the Lone Star State, Texas, has really started to become almost a regional brand of whiskey. In the US, the US American Distilling Institute claims that the combined output of the US distilleries is 37 million nine litre casks. But 20 million of those are made by just two brands, Jim Beam and Jack Daniels. The rest are made up by 1,600 different distilleries. And um, most of these are craft distilleries, little small, not producing huge amounts of product. Uh, Texas has 130 craft distilleries. So there's, the name of, obviously, you can't go through them all, but there's Balcones, Sun City, Rebecca Creek, Texas Teal, uh, obviously, lots more. Uh, but because of the climate of Texas, um, fairly hot and arid, but in certain places can become quite cold. There's a quite big swing in some places. It's having an effect. Now, it's a hot climate, and in some places the humidity can change quite a lot. So the angel's share can be between 8 and 10%. Now, we talked about the angel's share before. It's the amount of liquid that disappears. It's not necessarily always the alcohol. Depending on the humidity, it can be either the alcohol or the water. Now, some of these Texas whiskies are very young, but what seems to be happening is because of the sort of geographical location of Texas, you start to have this effect that you're not getting in other places. So possibly in the not too distant future, Texas could be seen as a whiskey region in its own right. Well, which is pretty exciting in its own way. Now, last. So we seem to have lost the audio there from uh, Marty uh, tonight. Uh, Marty, can you still hear me? Can you? Unfortunately, I don't think we can hear you at all. 
So I don't know what exactly is going on there tonight, uh, but uh, I have seen. I seem to have lost you completely, and in its entirety, uh, I have no audio whatsoever from you at all. So that means that it's uh, not ideal for our viewers because they cannot hear us whatsoever without the subtitles uh, so that there is uh, a wee bit of a wee bit of a letdown so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click us out can you hear me marty i can justin yes loud and clear you can hear me i can't hear you that is absolutely no good to man or beast because I can't hear you at all. So there we go. Uh, we will have to reconvene. Uh, I will uh, be with you very, very shortly because I can't actually hear you at all. I don't, I don't know why I can't hear you. I'm going to turn the volume up. I'm going to turn the volume up. Uh, I have no volume at all. Do you know what? I can't get volume at all. On my computer, no volume. Volumes disappeared altogether. Don't you love it when a show is live? This is like tomorrow's world. Nothing ever works. You can hear me, but I can't hear you. What is that all about? That is that is the most strangest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, so I'm going to change over to other set. Can you hear me, Marty? Yes, I can, Bill. All right. Well, there you go. We've just done away with the headphones. I hope there's no echo. So can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Maybe my head my headphones have stopped working. I have no idea. No idea what that's about. But there you go. We're back in the room now. Put your hands up at home if you can hear us. There you go. We've seen that. You can hear us. You can hear both of us. But we couldn't he hear each other. <laughs> Listen, is that the news for this week then? Is that it? Is that it? The only thing is, I would say, Justin, this is, this is the... Uh, Software, which just before we went on air, you said this is so easy, even you could use it, Murray. Well, <laughs> I, I, I didn't change any of the settings, and they actually, they actually, uh, it could be my headphones. Now, they're, they are cheap headphones, but they're quite good, and I do go through about one a year, uh, yeah. and they're about well, they maybe are a year old, but uh, just so you know who this is, we'll put this up on screen. Uh, this is the comp, this is the company, uh, this is the company that, uh, I don't know what happened to the audio there. It went, uh, but I hadn't changed any of the sentence, but it just went all of a sudden. So that's who we're coming to you by tonight. And you know where they're based? Do you know where they're based? They're based in Texas. They are not. I, I, I'm not making this up. You Google Restream are based in Texas. They well, are indeed. Their things come from Texas. You, uh, can, you can tweet them that. Tweet them that. So listen, there's uh, quite a lot of people watching tonight because you can stream to over 30 platforms at once. And there was well over uh, well over that number watching at one time. As you know, when we uh, do these shows, we get a lot of uh, viewers all around the world. We'll be getting to your comments in a minute, but we still have to do Beam Suntory, don't we? We have one more, one more article to do. Uh, Beam Suntory have unveiled a world blend whiskey. Uh, Ayo. 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 It's a Japanese word that describes blue or green colours. And it's to describe the ocean that connects Japan, Scotland, Ireland, Canada, and the US, which is where they're taking their whiskies from to put into this new blend. Now, it's going to be a travel retail exclusive. You can only buy it at airports. It retails for about £60. Now, they aren't making uh, available where they're getting their whiskies from, but one assumes that it's brands that they own. Now, I'm going to give you a little indication of what Beam Santori own. Now, this is just from my collection, and I'm going to dip in behind the table, which I know people like. Um, <laughs> so we have a, a Santori, so that would be their Japanese bit. They own the Freud. They own Kuli. They own Bowmore. They own Opentoshin. They own Knob Creek. They own Maker's Mark. They own Basil Hayden's. They own the Piggy, they own a Canadian Club, Alberta Premium. I could go on and on and on and on. Do they own it as well, do they? 
they own that land to tab. No, they don't own. They don't own. Uh, <laughs> they don't own I don't know whether they own Legacy or not, but they own pretty much everything. Uh, they own loads of types of vodkas and all that kind of stuff. So they're going to bring out a world whiskey, and uh, who knows what it'll be like. But oh, I, I, must, I almost forgot. Must cut on the table. That's this week in whiskey. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thanks for that, Marty. Now. Uh, that was this week in whiskey. We're trying to do that every week at the start start of the show. There is a lot happens every week. Uh, so if you, if you see something you want us to cover, remember to get in touch. Uh, tag us in it on Facebook or send it through us uh, via YouTube. Remember, it's Irish Whiskey Review on both channels. It's dead easy to find. And make sure you follow us on Irish Whiskey Review on uh, YouTube and Facebook. Now... Thank you. Marty, we better get through some of these chats because there's a lot of people in tonight already. We better say hi to them all systematically before we get thrown in at the deep end to uh, fermentation, which is this week's show's about. If you'd like to ask us any questions about fermentation, get ready to type them in. We will see them. We'll put them on screen and, uh, well, you can get your answer. Now, uh, let me see. Who was first in tonight? Uh, Mark Kerr. He must be sitting outside my house, tuning into my internet to see when we go live. Evening, Mark. Uh, evening to you. Trevor Watson saying hi. Uh, regular viewer. Uh, James and Moira Doherty saying hello. Uh, good evening to you. Uh, there's Julie Mason. Evening, Marty and Justin. Smiley face. There we go. Uh, Patrick Mulkey saying good evening, all. And let me see. First visit. Love hearing my home accents. Mm -hmm. I don't think Glenda Taylor is uh, here. I think Glenda Taylor is somewhere exotic because there was another message from her popped up somewhere, but I don't know where it's gone. Yeah. Uh, Jordy, Jordy Burke saying, so another Saturday with the boys. Prince Edward Island, uh, Edward Island Canada is watching. Excellent. We're wa w watching news, uh, watching us. Uh, evening, lads. Justin likes Del Boy drinks. Yes, I do like Del Boy drinks. I do like cocktails. Uh, Julie saying it's a nice touch with the glasses. Uh, it is indeed. Uh, glasses. I put them on for effect. I mean, yeah. Bad, does he? <laughs> uh, are they real or are they fake? I, I bought them. I bought them. They're actually very light reading glasses, but there is a little magnification on them. I think they're but they're more they're more potent than I thought. I have twenty twenty vision, Justin. So you, must be, you must be over 40. 40 there's Mark Mark Kerr saying you suit the Gleeks, Marty. There you go. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Glenda was Glenda saying too pricey. Is that a different Glenda? Yeah, it's the same Glenda. She's saying it's too pricey. That must have been the uh, the McCallans, was it? Oh, oh yeah. Well, <laughs> I think everybody would agree they were too pricey. But maybe she's talking about the boot. Don't know. No, hold on. What, what do you see what time it came in at? It came in at six minutes past. That would. Uh, um, no, that was a bit further on than the. the yeah. Uh, so it must have been, must have been the, the McAllen. So it's a bit pricey at that moment, I think. You're saying good evening. Uh, <laughs> Stanley saying he'll have one each of the six, I think. Uh, uh, we take his money to get it, you know. <laughs> Glenn is saying it's not happening. Uh, <laughs> Trevor saying OMG. Uh, must have been about the uh, – these don't appear on my screen instantaneously, by the way, and I have to flick to a different screen to see these. So we can't interrupt Marty when he's going through it, unfortunately. But uh, always always reference in the thing what you're talking about. Glenda saying, I drink bullet here all the time. She's in California. She is in California, Luke. She's in Cal California. California dreaming. Yeah, yeah she is. Glenda – Make sure you tell all your friends that like whiskey in California about this. Stanley Sung is tagging John Adair. Uh, Stanley Sung's tagging Ian Ward. Uh, yeah, Texas. Yeah, it is. J Julie, can you confirm that Restream is in Texas? Tell them my headphone audio cut out there. They'll probably say it's my Macintosh's fault. What do you see? Uh, Frank Heron is saying, unfortunately, I do not have the funds to buy the whole collection, but I only buy whiskey to drink, not as an investment. There you go. Nothing wrong with that at all, is there? Absolutely nothing at all. But uh, I, 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 I rather imagine none of those will ever be cracked open. And if they are, it'll be like some Arab sheik on holiday somewhere. Yes, yes. I can hear Marty on Facebook. 
Yes, I can hear you. I can hear Justin, but I couldn't hear Marty, so I don't know when what what he said to me because it's always something nasty he says to me, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Nice to you, Justin. I'm always nice. No worries, guys. We can hear both of you, but I couldn't hear Marty. I, yeah. I could hear me because I could see him responding to what I was speaking. Uh, would Would McAllen take a trade in for a bottle? Don't need my escort. I can hear you both. There you go. There you go. I, I can hear Marty too, but I'm, I'm hearing it through the TV rather than the headphones. And this week, there isn't any echo at all. How does that work? That's uh, great. Keep talking, Marty. I love red breasts. Any new whiskies there? Did, I thought we covered that last week, did we? Um, no, uh, the new, the, we don't talk about the new red breast advert. Um, I don't know whether there's any new Dreamcast. Dreamcast won't come out until next year, so no, I don't think there's any real news from red breast just at the minute. Although I did hear someone's thought about a, a red breast lost out cask strength edition. So whether that's going to be a product or not, I don't know. So, <laughs> thought of seeing something about myself. 50p in the meter there. Uh, pour a glass and sip a normal service will be very resumed. Yeah, sometimes it's the internet glitch and you never know. You just never know. The joy of going live. Um, let me see. Get new AA batteries. It's me and part that one. <laughs> Sit back, Justin, and have a drink and enjoy Marty. I was going to do that. I've, as you can see, I've enjoyed these little drinks already. Uh, uh, there's not many. Hold on. We better get, uh, oh, my God, under the table again. Uh, <laughs> is AO not a word for a ho horrible person? <laughs> what, what is true? I never thought of that. I never thought of that either. I was what? trying to be it in the red eye. Cosmopolitan, but no, no. No, no. Uh, Marty remind me of Tommy C C Cooper bottle glass sketch. Yeah, oh, they're filling up the bottle. Yeah, it never filled up. Yeah. I Hello from Alaska. Hello from Alaska. Hello. Right. What time is it in Alaska? I'm sure it's 10 hours behind us. Uh, That's let's learn fermentation. Jordy, what are you trying to do? You don't like the news. We'll have to do the hellos. If we don't do the hellos, you, you guys are hilarious. I'll be following. Yes, make sure you like us. Listen, there's loads of people watching. Sometimes when we go into it too quick, we don't get everybody on board before we even do the thing. But we better do the show tonight. Otherwise, yeah. I'll just be reading out the, the questions. 122 in Alaska. There's your answer. Oh, nine hours behind you. Nine hours. <laughs> okay, so here we go. This is the show. Away we go. Now, fermentation. Fermentation is probably the most important part of any beer or spirit, alcoholic beverage production, because it's really where the magic happens. Now, when I say magic, it is a little bit of a miracle when you think about it. Uh, and and not, not, not to denigrate anybody's religious feeling, but in the Bible, a miracle was that Jesus turned water into wine. Well, Yeast kind of do exactly the same thing, you know. They they take fairly useless products like water and, and grain and manage to turn them into marvellous alcohol, uh, which is in a way a miracle. Now, they reckon yeast evolved this as a method of defence. Now, how, they, how they've come to this conclusion, I'm not 100% sure, but alcohol kills... Uh, Microbes. That's why all our hand sanitizers are, are uh, 60 to 80 percent alcohol because it kills off microbes. So yeast were having to compete with microbes to eat the, well, not initially soft fruits, but they, you know, what they eat, other bacteria were trying to eat as well. So if you can produce alcohol, it means you kill them off, and that's how they reckon it happened. Now. This little miracle is how all alcohol is produced. Now, we've talked a little bit before about the grain, whether it's corn or rye or, or barley or whatever. It gets milled up in, in, into this uh, flour, this grist, uh, and then it gets washed, put into water, hot water, to, to extract the, the carbohydrates out of it and, and break down any the sugars and make it easy for the yeast to eat. Now, when these go into the fermenting tanks, 
the fermentation tanks are called washbacks. These can be made of various materials, so steel, stainless steel, wood, and sometimes even cement whenever it's on a huge scale. And there's reasons for using different ones. The wooden ones, some say they impart better flavours, but they're quite limited because they can't be too big. They're also harder to clean. You can't use any chemicals on them, but they're quite cheap. Stainless steel, obviously, doesn't corrode. And it's very good at protecting. They're very easy to manufacture, but they are expensive. They're also very easy to clean, and so on and so forth. So the, this sugar-filled wort comes down in, and yeast is added. Now, when it comes out of... When it comes of the mash tun is quite hot because the, the heat pulls out the sugar. And one of the things that, that you need in this liquid is it has to have the sugar in it, which makes it more dense than water. Obviously, you're putting more stuff in it, so it has to be loaded with the sugar, so it becomes quite dense. When it comes out of the mash tun, it's hot. Now, yeast can't survive at temperatures above 35 degrees centigrade. So what has to happen is it has to be cooled down. Now, they cool it down to 15 to 20, 25 degrees centigrade. And all of, the, all of these processes, distilleries do them in different ways. So there's no real hard and fast way of saying this is, has to be done this way. So it comes down. This original gravity will be higher than water. And that, that, this is kind of fundamental to it because that tells you how much sugar is in this uh, wort that's coming down and the sugar is what the yeast need to eat to produce what they need to produce okay now when they're making the washbacks out of wood it's normally larch or uh, oregon pine it's normally what it is because it grows very straight uh can, can you tell what this one is? is is this larch or oregon pine there in that picture do you know I can't remember that those those I took when I was at uh, Springbank. I was over at Springbank, uh, the Green Gale Distillery, the big uh, and whatnot. Uh, that's that's their washbacks. Not all yeah. distilleries like you taking pictures of that process. Sure, they don't. No, nope. lots of them get really narked about you doing it. Other ones say it's fine. Other ones say that you can cause an explosion and stuff. I don't know. It just they, they, they've all little idiosyncratic ways of doing things, you know? Yeah. Now, so when this comes into your your washback, now I've got to make like a few notes here because um, it can get quite confusing sometimes. Now, the yeast that they use mostly, and again, I have to be very careful here because not everybody does the same, is a Saccharomyces cerevisiae which is known as brewer's yeast. Uh, it, it was originally discovered on, on grape skins, so, but it, it was isolated and grew from there. That's where it naturally occurs. But there are hundreds of different types of yeasts, and some are used sometimes and some are not used. And most of the time, it's brewer's yeast that's used because it's commercially very available. You know what you're going to get with it, uh, and it's reasonable priced. Now, yeasts need certain conditions in order to be optimised to do what they need to do. So you need to control the, the pH. You need to, you have to be, it has to be hygienic because, obviously, yeasts are going to be competing with other bacteria, and bacteria are much, much smaller than yeast. So you have to... You have to almost have sterile conditions in, in order for the yeast to, to go. You have this rich sugar liquid, you have this sugary liquid. So spoiling bacteria are attracted to it. So it's, it's imperative that you don't let them get there first because once the yeasts come, then they have to compete and so on and so forth. And you end up with off flavours. Now, the off flavours, you can be talking about parts per billion and to put that into context you could be talking like a drop 
in a swimming pool, an Olympic sized swimming pool, and that's how sensitive it is for us to detect. So it has to be clean. That's why lots and lots of distilleries prefer to use stainless steel because it's obviously much easier to clean than, than wood. So once you have your yeast, you have to put it in to, to your, your, your wort and it's liquid. Now it comes in three forms. You have dried, you have a, a, a compound and a, and a cake. And each of these have different qualities and each distillery prefers one over the other, um, certainly in terms of, of price. Dry yeast, it's obviously easier to store, it lasts longer, etc, etc. But different distillers, depending on what they want, will use different processes, will use different uh, inoculation rates, how they put it in, etc, etc. Again, it comes down to the personal preference of the distiller, and this will be done through trial and error, like everything else. Now, to give you an idea of how small the yeast, the yeast cells are, because these are singular cell funguses. I mean, these are these are under an electron microscope, these here, aren't they? Yeah, they will be. I mean, they, 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 to give you an idea of how they're measured, it's normally 20 billion per litre. Now, if you imagine the size of some of those big fermentation tanks, you have 20 billion least yeast cells per litre, and you could have 30,000 litres. It gives you an idea of just how tiny they are. Yeah, they're certainly very small, but very, very powerful. I mean, they're used in lots of other things, yeast, the bread and as well. Absolutely. And they, they are, they do perform that. I mean, it is a lot of miracle. There's no, no other way around that. Um, now, once the yeast goes in, really goes through a process where you have four phases. The phase one is known as the lag phase. So the yeast is pitched in to this sugary wort, and nothing really happens for a few hours. As the yeast go in, they, they, they start to go, oh, I'm hungry, and start chewing. And once they start doing that, they start to multiply uh, and breed, essentially. So the nutrients that the yeasts need are, they need minerals, they need certain vitamins, and they need amino acids which are present in the cereal. I mean, they eat their, their food source is the sugar, but they need these other things to, to, to metabolize, to, to, to grow, to save every other living thing. So, a couple of hours, nothing really happens. Then phase two kicks in, the growth phase. Now, the growth phase starts between three and 24 hours after. Again, it depends on the conditions and what you're actually fermenting. And this is where the yeast take on board what they need, the sugar, they take the sugar, the nutrients, but they also take on the oxygen that's liquid, that's, that's inside the liquid. So this is the aerobic phase. So they use up all the, the, the oxygen, uh, the, the, the specific gravity. Remember I told you this is loaded with sugar. It starts to fall because the sugar is being used up and alcohol has uh, is less dense than water. Now, the growth phase uses up all the oxygen. And what's happening there is, I did a little drawing before that, Justin, because I couldn't find an accurate um, picture <laughs> online. They're all, they're all a bit too scientific. And so that you can understand it, Justin, I did a little drawing. Okay. Okay. Let me see it. Okay. Look, you see. You have the sugar and the nutrients going in. This is the yeast cell. So the energy, it produces energy. And then you've got CO2. You have your ethanol. You have new yeast cells being produced and heat. Okay, so it starts to warm up. Okay, it starts to get warmer. Now, during the growth phase, the oxygen is all used up. Then, afterwards, 
you have the fermentation phase, and this is when the main bulk of the conversion will happen. All the, fer all the fermentable, uh, sorry, the, the fermentation phase, all the oxygen is used up, and you move over to an anaerobic phase. Yeasts are amazing at surviving. They can actually survive, they can actually survive off ethanol. They can actually live off the stuff that they produce, which is quite quite unique. You know, they create a waste product, but then can reuse it again to, to fuel themselves. Because I mean alcohol is a great fuel, you set fire to it, you know, that's how much energy it contains. So this is then the anaerobic phase. Now they use up all the nutrients that they can then, and then they start to run out. Now, as they start to run out, you run into the post-fermentation phase, which is after all the fermentable carbs are, have been eaten, there's no more alcohol produced, and that's really the end of the, the, the end of the cycle. I've done a little drawing here, and this is for glucose. This is just a little easy way of doing it. The glucose cell is C6H12O6, okay? The yeast, munchy, 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 and it produces two carbon dioxide molecules. It produces then two ethanol molecules as well. So you get um, two CO2, two C2H5OH, which is ethanol, and then you get your heat and then your biomass, because as the yeast starts to die off, they, they, they died it and they have uh, this sort of biomass and that's important for for some other reasons later on. You're now left with what's called wash. And this wash is basically a beer. Now it's quite a strong beer. It's in and around sort of 8%. It can be up to 8%. Again, this is all down to the distiller. They'll tweak it to whatever recipe they want to have. So you have that. Now, the key conditions, as I said, are the pH, you know, but you need to monitor the total acidity, the final gravity, the original gravity, the alcohol concentration, the residual sugar concentrations, the temperature, uh, the fermenter yield, and the raw material weights. All of this has to be taken into account just to make the beer. So you can see how complicated all of this is, you know, and all the processes that are going on all the time with this, okay? Now, Total time, it can be two to four days, so 45 hours to 100 hours, again, depending on the distiller and what grain it's from, other, other spirits and other uh, fermentable sugars take longer than this again. So you can have brandy can take two weeks and calvados. Uh, the apple brandy, you, you've had Calvados, it can take up to six months to ferment. But you're always going to be going against time for, for economic reasons, spoilage reasons, etc. etc. So, cereal <laughs> fermentation has to be done fairly quickly. It can be done really, really quick. So, Mark's saying he's heard Guinness kept brewing during lockdown to keep their yeast strain alive despite having to convert the stout to fertilizer. Mm. Don't know, haven't heard that one. I didn't, I didn't hear that they had to keep their, their yeast alive, but during lockdown, the amount of, of beer that <laughs> want to be wasted, I mean, the millions of gallons of it, um, which they did find out that they can they can turn it into a, 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 an animal feed, which is what they do actually with the, the, the cereal after they've taken out the sugars out of it. So a lot of that goes, it's a, a draft, it's called, and they send it out for, for sheep to eat, it sounds like. And he adds, what Marty is saying is that distillers are magicians. That's what we would like to think. I like to think that they are a little bit, yeah. Um, but that's taken away from what the bacteria, from what the yeast do. Um, again, there's lots of other things going on in the process that no one really understands. It's not known to science because there's bacteria can help with the flavour of compounds as well. But if there's too much of it, then that 
brings in off flavors. Um, you, it's a very, very, very complicated process. But ultimately, that's where the magic starts. You can add everything is created in the, your 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 new make spirit at the fermentation stage. The distillation is only taking away stuff you don't want and leaving the stuff that you do. So it's those little yeasts that make all the, all the flavor compounds in the new make spirit. Once it goes into a cask, that's a different scenario. But the new make spirit is all done by the yeasts and possibly some of the bacteria. Again, this is not particularly well understood. Now, I said what's left um, after the yeasts have done their work and the liquid's drained off and head off to the, the still feeds. Um, yeah, after that, you have this stillage, this leftover. Um, and it all depends, again, it can depend on what the, 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 the distiller has allowed in to the, the, the washback, what's left over. You'll have possibly heard of sour mash. Um, yep. Sour mash whiskies. That's where they take a portion of the what's left there and add it to the, the, the mash bill of the next batch. And the idea behind that is you're taking some of the bacteria, some of the, 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 the yeast, dead yeast cells, whatever it is that's in there that you want, and adding it to the, the next batch to give yourself, uh, to, to regulate uh, acidity levels, to introduce bacteria that will then produce flavour compounds later on. It's very complicated, but that's what sour mash means. Okay? This show seems to be one of these ones that verges from, you know, science like this here, which blows your mind, to you basically saying that uh, uh, distillers are magicians and that you're basically telling people that alcohol is really yeast pee. pee, pee. I mean, look at this. Yeast is, is like a Pac-Man that eats sugar, fart CO2 and pees alcohol. That's essentially it. Um, it's... <laughs> It's a very bizarre thing, and the fact that it's done on an industrial scale really, really does make make your head spin when you think about it. Uh, it's very it's very easy to become sort of complacent about this, but it, it, there's so many factors and so much going on that it's it's a miracle that that, 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 that it happens. So you have this interplay between what you're putting in, what the yeast does, how long you leave it, the temperatures, the pH, the all of these factors affect the flavour. Now, if you think about that, over the years, you're trying to create consistent product all the time because your, your customer, they don't really care what you've done. They just want, I want to buy that bottle and know that it tastes of the same as it tasted three months ago or five years ago. And you have to try and get all of that correct because if you get it wrong to start with, there's nothing you can nothing you can do to get it back, really. So it has to be right all the time. And if you take that, well, how, how how come how come we can try something fresh from a, a new distillery, right? Mm -hmm. And it'll taste not so bad. And then we'll taste something old from an old distillery, and it's it's pretty darn good. But yet the old distillery's middle aged one. Isn't any good, or doesn't doesn't really live up to our expectations? I mean, the people that do these things know what they're doing. I mean, we know they know what they're doing because you know, at, at Bush at Bushmill, she's been doing it a long time, indeed. And she's probably just had it. Now, but what Helen uh, Helen Mulholland at Bushmills is the blender. She's not the distiller. The right. Now, blender. I've talk, said about this before. The distiller is the science guy. He's the the, the, the brainiac, the, you know, the, the glasses wearing guy. The, the, you know, he's that guy. Okay. Because he has to control, or she, they have to control whatever chemical processes there are to get that right. You know, you have, I mean, you know yourself, Justin. We talked about this the other day, barley. That, that head of barley is different from other heads of barley. 
it has different moisture contents, or different nitrogen contents, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And all of these are slight variables, and you have to get it right, that product, right at the end. Your new mech spirit has to be right. Otherwise, you put it in a cask, and it's always going to be totally different 10 years down the line. Now, some people, for example, I know Lefroy. You know, they, they cannot abide the stuff. They just think it's awful. I was going to have one, but I don't think it bother now because it's something else. Um, <laughs> and if you take a, you take a Lefroy, you're always tasting Lefroy for hours. <laughs> you know, so all of this, Lefroy really gets its, its flavour from after the, the, the yeasts have done their work, you have this body of, of uh, liquid, the, the wash. And like I said, it still only takes away stuff you don't want and leaves what was already there. So the, the distiller, you cut it a bit later and have in some of the phenols at the end so you have that, that sort of medicinal thing. But that's already there. There's nothing stopping you from doing that really with any of these brands. It's just that comes down to the distiller. But that's already been done by the yeast. The yeast have already done all of this. Some like, some fantastic comments coming in here. Uh, Blender has to fix the distiller's boohoos. Yeah. <laughs> they can do, yes. Uh, we've seen that done on the shipyard before. You know, the wee man rescuing the bridge by betting the feet back in the other direction at night, you know. Uh, I heard about a guy in the, in the, the in Caterpillar got guys were working on stuff and they used to drop their, their spanners into like tanks and it was going to, they wouldn't have to cut them to try and pull them out. So what they did was they got the, they, they pushed them over until the spanner went into a corner and the welder then just held the welder until the spanner melted inside the tank. <laughs> so it didn't rattle about. So it's yeah. the that's a good one. If I haven't heard that one before. Uh, there you have uh, Mark saying he put his last 1608 into the Infinity Bottle. See Justin and Marty's earlier show. Uh, they must be commenting between themselves on there, and we sometimes can't see them things because of pri pri uh, privacy settings. Uh, Mike, Michael Matthews is saying, great captions, Justin. I think I think it was these graphics he was talking about, like uh, the Pac Man. I didn't do the graphics; Marty acquired them. There, I the people, the mem generators mentioned there. Look, look at that there. There you go. Now, one last thing I want to talk about is the different spirits are and different products. The yeasts are different and the fermentation times are different etc etc for beer obviously it's different again for wine it's different etc etc one of the things that i find really interesting is in rums we've heard about the sour mash uh where you take some of this stillage something the leftover the dead yeast cells and all that and put it into the next uh batch. in rum production there's a, a process called dunder which is Something very similar, but back in the day in Jamaica, what they used to do was they used to take this stillage out and dump it in a pit, okay? And it became these became known as dunder pits. Now, all of these dead yeast cells and different acids and so on and so forth were dumped into these pits. And loads of flies <laughs> laid eggs in them and all manner of stuffing into this muck okay. is this what is this is this what i'm going to show you next is is this it i, I imagine it is what you're going to show it's kind of just a pit now you imagine in jamaica there's going to be lots of fruit flies flying about around because there's still going to be residual sugar and that kind of stuff in there or certainly residual uh stuff that they can munch on or, or certainly eat now that dunder pit that can be that muck that's in there. It can be in there for years. And some rum producers use this to go into their mash, into their, <laughs> into their wort. Is that it why I like rum so much? <laughs> some of the, I've, I've read books that have said certain rums, they used to throw dead carcasses and stuff into them as well. And this produced these, these bacteria 
the, the anybody putting into the mash to then go in and get to to basically compete, if you like, in some ways with the yeasts and for the yeasts to kind of move. And this produced these these chemicals that produce into the rum. Now I imagine that once it went into the still, it'll kill off any any chance of any pathogens or bacteria or whatever. But I would imagine if some people knew how some of these rums were produced, that they probably wouldn't be overly keen on it, you know? It's about like never find out how your food's being done. Uh, I do watch that show sometimes with the, the big baldy guy of uh, you know mm-hmm. Master Chef. And it's, it's very interesting, but I have known for years that uh, a lot of E numbers are actually, many of them are byproducts of other things, you know. And I, I once went to an art exhibition uh, and there was a book made of pigs that t- showed you the 200 things that pigs go into, you know. So no yeah. part of the animal carcass is wasted. So, I mean, I, I, I'd be pleased to know if, if some of those little salty swimming pigs in Jamaica went into my room. <laughs> me and you were both at that that was that book where it was covered in the pig skin on the outside you and I were both I forgot there. you were there too that's right you were there yeah as well it's quite interesting never to find out all the how they use pig teeth and stuff but in some ways it's quite disgusting but now that's fermentation and I know it's quite complicated and probably a little bit boring in parts but it's really the key point of all alcoholic spirits that's how it's done uh, i mean yeah it, it is it is it is it is scary marty uh no uh did well, my flafter no she did it of her own accord <laughs> that's a the jamaica joke my wife left me right jamaica no she went of her own accord do you not know that one no i think that's i think that's a good one i would alone day just <laughs> He's got long. <laughs> That's a very good one. Do you not like that one? No. Do you not like that one? Right. Uh, all right. We'll hide that. So uh, we've got about 10 minutes left tonight, eight minutes left tonight. I don't want to run over because if I run over, uh, well, <laughs> it's too much work to clip it down to a part that makes sense. Um, so, so that is basically fermentation. Um, I hope I explained that okay. I know it's quite complicated and some part probably a little bit boring, but um, that's how that's how booze is made. So no, you, you did, Marty, but but it seems to go. This is our our, our most extreme show yet because it goes from the most complicated formula and <laughs> graphs like this to mm. to absolutely crazy things like this, you know, uh, like this. And then it goes to a pit of muck, a dunder pit. I mean, that that is that is a far out show. Yeah, we, we, we kind of always want to keep these things light hearted, but whenever you're talking about some of this stuff, it's, you can't not do a bit of the sciencey stuff. You know, when you do the whole sort of range. Um, but I hope that explains it for most people. Um, there are other forms of fermentation, and other uh, yeasts can be used, and there's lots of experiment. There, there's companies now who are basically purposely looking for different yeasts to, to get different flavours, but it's the yeast that does all the work, essentially. The distiller's only there to make sure that their environment's okay. So so we're we're maybe getting a bit high end. We're maybe getting like those, you know, those fuddy duddies that we, we, we see in other shows. Um, <laughs> people are saying Will you do a show about the best bottles under 20, under 30, and under 40, etc.? That's a good idea. Okay. Um, okay. But, um, Who was it asked for this show, by the way? Somebody specifically asked for fermentation. Someone asked a few weeks ago if I would do one on fermentation. Um, I can't remember who, but that's, that's why this was loaded in the head. We do try and please our audience, Justin. We do try and make it, try and keep it as lighthearted as possible, but. Whenever people ask you for something, you know, kinda not really any way of dumbing it down, you know. Um, There's Trevor saying it's a very interesting subject. It would take me a couple of classes to get it all in. Classes <laughs> or glasses, Trevor. Classes <laughs> or glasses. Yeah. Uh, awesome info tonight. Love it. Thank you very much for that. But you've got to remember, you're a Canadian, Jordy. You're a Canadian. Canadian. They're more. They're more Canadian rye whiskies and, and beer. Uh, yeah, lovely. I, I do like a, a, a bit of a rye whiskey with a nice wee peppery kick off it. 
Um, there's a lot more, a lot more rye coming into Irish whiskey now too because of the pot still. Um, at Marshville. Yeah, making peppery kicks. We could we could start an argument. You know, there's Michael from Alaska. Is Alaska part of Canada, Michael? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I'm, only, I'm only trying to start a friendly argument. Oh, yes. I've made the mistake a few times of saying to a Canadian, oh, what part of the States are you from? I'm from Canada. Oh, sorry. It's a bit like saying to someone from Portugal, are you from Spain? It doesn't go yeah. down that well, you know? No, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. A friend of mine's actually going to Portugal on Thursday, you know? I wish I was going to Portugal. Hey, here, listen, Mike, Michael Matthews, we've started an argument here. Michael Matthews is saying, no, America. No, Michael, I, I know Alaska is part of America. It used to belong to Russia, but they sold it for a few million to, to America. Uh, I don't know, not that long ago. No, I think it's only in the what, 1930s or something. Something like that. Something I'm like that. In the, in the early 50s, I think. Something like that. Interesting and fun. Another great show. Thanks, Murray and Justin. Yes, thanks very much, folks. Make sure you go to uh, the Irish Whiskey Review on uh, YouTube. Irish Whiskey Review on YouTube. Spelt that way. E-Y and I-E-W, not U-E. And mm -hmm. make sure you subscribe and hit the bell there because, uh, well, it doesn't cost them. All you need to do is be logged into your Google account. You have to have a Google account because otherwise your Android phone won't work otherwise. So you all have Google accounts. Uh, and log in there to uh, YouTube and hit subscribe. Please, please do that. So there's a lot of people watching from all over the world tonight. Uh, have, we, we, we don't have anybody from Japan watching yet. And we do mention Suntory. And uh, somebody told me there's about 150 Japanese whiskies. Is that you or somebody else was telling me that? Uh, there's a whole pile. But there's, there's, there's not as many distilleries as people think. Um, Japanese, Japanese whiskey kind of tries to focus, tries to focus on quality and, and how they do it, although they're sort of moving away from that. The reputation's a bit down the pan. But... Uh, no, there's not as many distilleries as you would think in Japan, but again, they have a number of different brands, but uh, there's a bit to go yet before they catch up with the US, for example. Yeah. Which is said earlier on a 1600 whiskey distilleries now. Yeah. Loads of info tonight, you have to say. It is, it is. Lo there's loads of info every night. I mean, you wouldn't think, you know, when you say one word like fermentation, how much is involved in it. Uh, uh but like I say, I had to trim down an awful lot of stuff to try and get it to fit into half an hour. I could go on and off. I can talk about malolactic fermentations. I could talk about different, all the different yeasts and, and uh, all the different stuff that can go wrong and why they go wrong and what they produce. And, and it would just be boring as hell, to be honest. But you kind of understand it. Doing something like that, you have to try and pare everything down, and it's quite difficult. But yeah, hope I don't care. Yeah. Yeah, there's Trevor's also saying it would be good to do the, the 30, 40, 50 whiskey. Yeah, that, thanks for that. I use, I use message each other now, but boys, because uh, Mark said the same thing as well. I think you're messaging or reading the messages because they are public. Uh, but listen, do, do, you like, do you like the news at the start? Because the news at the start, because if we didn't do the news at the start, we wouldn't cover that topic until months down the line, Re really, Marty, would we? Well, I kind of like doing the back of the news at the start because there's so much happens in the whiskey world. Uh, and I like highlighting the, the fact that, you know, Bullet are planting a million oak trees. I like highlighting these things because it's very easy to criticise big companies like the Azu for doing this and practices that you disagree with. But when they do something like that, or certain one, one of the brands do something like that, it should be applauded. You know, it's very easy to be critical. So I, I like highlighting this kind of stuff. And you know, we're, we're getting some great comments in tonight. Uh, by the way, as a result of a previous shows, I bought a bottle of sex. Nice whiskey, but what a horrible bottle. Have you got uh, sex in there? What's wrong with that? I that's like a, that bottle. That's a beautiful bottle. It was going to include a, 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 a bit about Alex Thomas, who who used to work at Bush Mills, and still sort of works in Bush Mills. Um, and this is her baby, uh, and, and good on her. She, she was chosen by Proximo, who are part of uh, Jose Cuervo to, to make a whiskey and you probably a single malt uh, in some ways related to their fun. I love the bottle. I think the bottle's best man about it. I'm totally honest. <laughs> and then we have other questions like this. John James Burns. I would be, it would be nice to hear about 
the macrolactic and the solid state fermentation. I think I think would bore you to death if Marty went into that. It probably is uh, malolactic fermentation. Uh, malic acid does fermentation it produces lactic acid and CO2 and uh, it happens more so in wine and all that kind of stuff. It, it probably is. We would, there'd be no fun memes in that. <laughs> hey listen th this 30 pound one's catching people's imagination uh we'll leave it with this jonathan mcculloch is saying if you had 30 pounds marty what would you buy well i'll give you i'll give you a hint uh during the week i bought a bottle of black bush uh at 25 pounds for a liter it was on amazon prime day and i know everybody will go oh you should be buying off amazon about it Twenty-five pound for a liter of Black Bush. It's fabulous whiskey, and that's probably what I would buy. Yeah, there you go. Good, good, good. Gosh, it didn't have to go quick tonight. It didn't have. It didn't have to go quick. What we'll do is we'll we'll run until five past here, Marty, to make up for the lost time with the sound time, because then I'll be able to cut that out and I'll put it in the final edit for Instagram, which we can't do at the same time because it's too complicated to do i did try to do it this week but it's proven uh too complicated for me because i hate computers really even though i've had yeah. one since 1983 <laughs> and i've been online since 1989 um gr great there uh jo mark was saying needs a little jingle though yeah we're working on a jingle for the the news headlines but uh, they were looking too much money for it so i decided not to do it <laughs> I, have a, I have a great jingle I'll, I'll, I'll maybe send you a sample of it Privately yeah. Mark So as you can hear it Because if I play it on this uh, I'll have to pay the money for it uh, Is there any musicians out there Is there any musicians out there That could compose us a little jingle And then say hmm. Well I, 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 I used to know a boy that did it But he went and died on me So he, <laughs> he would have been able to do a jingle for us I What's actually always fancied a theme tune so that's about it, folks. Uh, uh, Mark Senny, Love Batch Books. Thanks for watching all over the world in Alaska and Canada. Uh, but yeah. uh, always say hello, always comment, like, and share so as we know you're there. I hope you've enjoyed it. Fermentation was a show that somebody asked for, and you learned something new. I mean, I didn't even know they did concrete ones at all, Marty. Concrete fats. Oh, that, that'll be in the big industrial ones. It There'll not be too many touristy ones that will take you in and show you a concrete wash bag. Do you really think, do you think yeah. would walkers need to be doing that for the, the quantity that they have? No, they, they still won't do it. What you're talking about is industrial scale alcohol production, right. uh, which which Cooley down in, in County Louth, that's what they were before Dr. Peeling bought it over and converted it. Now, uh, I don't think they have a, a I've never been around Cooley, but uh, they they were a big time uh, whiskey uh, whiskey alcohol producer for industrial purposes, and then he converted it. So I would imagine they possibly had a, a concrete wash bank, and that would have been done away with when they turned it over to spirit production. I would have thought, possibly, maybe I don't know. Okay, uh, that's it. A lot of mentions still coming in. Thanks for a great uh, night, guys. Enjoyed it as always. Thank you very much for that. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then uh, Patrick Mosley saying, I'm drinking back Chris at the moment, 26 euro in Tesco's, 21 pound uh, using percentage, which is, I would say, uh, sterling euro voucher. There you go. I seldom ever a black bush in the house because when it comes in, I drink it. <laughs> that's a, that sounds sort of counterproductive, but nonetheless, that's what happens. If I bring it in, I normally play through it before I drink that else. Okay. Any idea what next week's going to be, Marty? No. Well, I'll tell you, I'll let you know about Thursday afternoon sometime, because it's probably going to think of it. You told, you told me about Sunday or Monday that we're going to do fermentation this week. I did, Justin, because I appreciated the fact that it was going to be quite difficult for me to do and cut back on lots of stuff. So uh, I had to spend a bit of time doing this this week. You skipped through everything.
I loaded up a wee jingle there just for badness to play for him. <laughs> oh, we're not off. We're not off. We're still on. We're still on. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Ha, ha, ha.